Wake up, El Salvador. I'm coming to you live from my kitchen. I got this jersey in the mail yesterday. I ordered it from Nikki Sport out of Los Angeles, California. As you can see, Nikki's does a really good job. They do really fast delivery, and I'm really happy with the results. This is my third product that I've purchased from their company, so if you'd like to check them out, uh, nikkisports.com. I'll put a link in the description box for you. Um, I got this jersey made in honor of Ruben El Polaco Marroquin. Um, I think he did a great job when he was representing the uh, Santana team, El Faz, and then later on traded to the San Salvador soccer team, Alianza, and he continues to do a good job. He's also represented our country um, internationally. Um, so what I wanted to talk to you about this morning is El Salvador doesn't promote their players. There is no marketing department for their players. So many of you, unless you're from El Salvador, have never heard of El Polaco. Um, and so many other players that come out of El Salvador that have lots of talent, lots and lots of talent, but because there's no promotion, because there's no marketing department, these guys get no publicity and most of them never make it out of El Salvador, even though they're very, very talented players. Um, Marroquin, El Polaco being one of them. Um, a lot of the players that play in the club Division One football or soccer in El Salvador um, play for nothing. They play absolutely free. So... A lot of the coaching staff does the same. I think um, for our national soccer team, I think the head coach makes somewhere around $60,000, which to American standards, that's potatoes, you know. So I just want to talk to you all a little bit about that this morning. It's a little frustrating, for I'm sure, for the players who use this career as a way to make money, as a way to get paid, you know, as a way to support their family. Uh, they've worked hard their entire life. Uh, they've worked hard to build up their career and only to come find out that the club teams in El Salvador don't pay. And if they do pay, they, they pay very little money and it's not enough to support yourself or your family, uh, much less consider a career. Um, a lot, another thing that I wanted to touch on was a lot of these stadiums in El Salvador don't have seating for the entire um, official. So most of the people sit on what they call concrete. Um, the stadiums are usually made out of concrete or metal, and typically you just, it's just like bench style. I consider it sitting on the floor if it's made from concrete because it's that's pretty much what it is. There's usually one section where they do provide seating. Uh, that's usually for the higher up people who can afford to pay the extra for the seating. But I think internationally it should be a standard. Every stadium should have a seating capacity for everyone who comes to the field. You know, if you want people to come to your games, you should try and make them as comfortable as possible. Not have them sit on the floor or stand the entire game. Um, another thing that I wanted to touch on was in El Salvador, most of the stadiums have a fence around the actual playing field. And this is because the people... Uh, they usually climb the fence. They usually crash the fence. They're usually uh, very rowdy crowds. They uh, charge the field, you know. To me, it's highly disrespectful to, you know, go running in the field while a game is going on or to hurl a Coca-Cola can or a Coca-Cola bottle into the field while the game is going on, trying to aim at the referee, uh, you know, for not you know, calling the the call that you wish would have gone your way, um, so on and so forth. So, 
I think it looks terrible. I think that the Salvadoran Federation should consider, you know, taking them down. You know, elevate yourself to international standards. If you look at uh, the British Premier League, if you look at the Spanish uh, Primera División, Italian, they don't have rails around the playing field. The people just, out of respect, don't run out into the field. Um, so, yeah, so these are some of the things that I, I, I wish El Salvador would wake up about, you know. Get your players some kind of marketing team, some kind of uh, deals, contracts, you know, spokespersons, you know, somebody who can say, hey, this is El Polaco Marroquín. He is one of the top defenders in El Salvadorian football. Uh, with a stature of five foot four, he still managed to reach to the top level, which uh, is in reality very difficult to obtain, uh, given some of the players and the talent that they have down there. Got to remember, all most of these players are playing for free, so it's all heart. It's all just who wants to be here. And this guy, if you ever see him play, if you ever watch him play, he really, really wants to be there. My hats go off. Hat, hats go off to you. Uh, Polaco, doing a great job. Um, I hope that you get selected for the national squad again this year when we face off against Peru. Um, another thing, you know, El Salvador, wake up, put some seating in your stadiums. And if your club team is orange, have the seating match the club team colors. Don't make the seating blue in a stadium full of orange just because blue is the national color of our national team. That doesn't make any sense. Pay attention to the United States. Pay attention to other clubs in, in the world. They will not do something so silly like this. You know, uh, particularly my club team, San Miguel, their club team is orange and the seating that they did provide for, like I said, for the upper elites is blue and white representing the national colors. It, it doesn't make sense. If the, orange, if the team club's colors are orange, make the entire stadium orange. Um, you know, provide seating for everyone. Don't just make it a, oh, well, if you're able to afford it, you can have a seat. But if you're not, you're going to have to stand or sit on the floor. Um, and also consider removing the rails from the grounds, from the uh, actual playing field, because I think it looks tacky. Consider maybe doing some kind of um, social media movement to try and tell the people, we're going to remove these rails. We need to learn to be respectful. We need to learn that cameras are everywhere and the entire world is watching. Um, and, and then implement the changes. So, with that being said, I know I went on a rant a little bit too long. Uh, thank you all, all for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell so you get notifications when we make new videos. Um, also, check out Nikki Sport out of California. Uh, they have virtually... Every club and national team jersey in the world you can think of. Uh, all right, until next time, have a good day, YouTube.